Jupiter the Hybrid, also known as Corbin Pinnell or Shadow Raven, is a man in his mid-twenties from Idaho. Corbin would gain infamy after a string of live streams where he admitted to some of the worst crimes humanly possible and is actively being investigated by his local police department. Jupiter the Hybrid is without a doubt one of the darkest cases I have covered on this channel, with countless allegations against him dating all the way back to his childhood. You see, Jupiter is a product of the United States foster care system. He was taken from his birth parents around the age of one and ended up living with a foster family that he eventually called his own. Jupiter's childhood was a nightmare because one of his brothers was truly evil. We'll discuss more on him later, but Jupiter ended up emulating some of his behavior and this landed him in a group home. But even then, he did not stop he would just take his escapades to the internet, where he would catch the attention of a content creator named Linda Binda, both for his eccentricities and the horrible things that he was doing. Linda would proceed to do a series of interviews with Jupiter asking him about these things. Jupiter, who was seeking a romantic relationship with Linda, not only confessed to his crimes, but was also telling highly elaborate, made-up stories just to impress Linda. One of my favorite being that he was a hacker who personally warred with Anonymous. I ran with a group of hackers. I'm telling the truth. I used to run with a group of hackers. Oh, wow. It was fun while it lasted, too. When our uh, boss man graduated and moved on to greener pastures, he left me in charge. And my friend Skylar at the time, who was my then rival, usurped power from me and took over. Wow, that's like Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, the Nerd Brigade is what we called ourselves back then. We called ourselves the Nerd Brigade because we were just a bunch of computer nerds. But I'm not sure if I'm wanting to continue that life because if I continue that life, I'm going to constantly be on the run and I will never have to be, you know, I would never, ever be able to settle down in one place. Don't do that because I want to, I want to be with you forever. And I don't, I don't want to have to, I don't want you to be on the run. Yeah. Once the guild has got its new footing, I'm going to tell the others who I ran with, I'm going to tell them I'm retiring. I'll stay on as an advisor, but after that I'm done. Jupiter wants us to believe that his childhood was full of hacking, and other grand adventures, and not the horrifying reality that it was. Because not only does Jupiter claim to have been a professional hacker, but that he was offered his position as a hacker after becoming known around town as the King of Thieves. You do realize I was the King of Thieves at one point out in Melba, so you probably picked up a few things from me. Yeah, oh, I probably did. You, you taught me a lot. Yes. Picking pockets was easy back then, but not anymore. I don't do it no more. I'm actually confessing that I used to be a thief. I, before I ran with the Nerd Brigade, I used to be a street corner thief. Uh, a kid who would steal stuff from other kids to sell to other kids on a black market, like, you know. So I started that up. And then before everything hit, before... I realized it, I was getting some fame and infamy. Jupiter claims that he's worked with the FBI, he's picked pockets, he's hacked computers. They're all just blatant lies. It seems to be all in an attempt to impress Linda. But this is all just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Jupiter's delusions. Because Corbin legitimately believes that he is a vampire-werewolf hybrid. He also throws dragon and demon in there at times. Corbin claims that his birth mom was a werewolf and his birth father was a vampire, making him a werepire. When asked what Corbin does for a blood source, he gave a fascinating answer. Using blood magic, he has the ability to create life in inanimate objects. He calls them homunculus. Here is Corbin describing some of his werepire powers, as well as displaying one of his favorite homunculi. Um, so, like, do you act in, on any of your werewolf or vampire stuff, like, in a relationship? If, like, like, if you want, I'm, I can transfer my powers depending on, I can pass up my powers through a bite or a piece of my DNA. Uh, who have you bit? 
No one yet. So how do you know that you can you can transfer through biting? Well, I can use my blood to bring inanimate objects to life and give them their own personality. Someone asked, um, since you're a vampire, do you drink blood? Um, not human blood, no. Um, I use that as a last... I use that as a last-ditch attempt if I ever, you know. Yeah, I only, I don't drink human blood. I don't do that. It, I use it as a last-ditch attempt. So what blood do you drink? Um, usually animal blood. I what? can bring inanimate objects to life and use them as a blood source. They're known as homunculi, and they're used as a blood source. So, like, you would find, like, a rabbit on the side of the road and just drink its blood? Yeah, something like that. Although, I prefer to drink blood from a humunculus that I've created. What was the last animal you ate? Uh, it was an inanimate object that I drank blood from, and I'd rather not get her now because she doesn't like being on camera. She's shy, so I can't really. Um, her name's Shira Tora. Although people call her Twilight, her real, her name I gave her was Shira Tora, which is translated to Shooting Star. Um, but sometimes I call her Star for short, but sometimes I'll just call her by her name. So she's one of the many homunculi I brought to life. Um, since she is, has life to her, she is able to give birth to children and stuff like that. So, so like you've had children with her? Yeah. Um, but I made her promise no more after like our last set of triplets. I told her no more. I was done. So, yeah. So like, how does she get pregnant? I don't want to explain it to you. It's, it involves a lot of magic and pornography. That's all I'm going to say. He has a whole box load of little pony figurines that he considers their children. And he assigns a lot of real life traits to her. During my interview with Jupiter, he refused to bring Sheratora out because she was mad at me. To him, these homunculi are completely real. Which makes me think that he may believe the werepire stuff as well. I have not once heard him deny that he is a werepire. Jupiter actually has a number of paranormal videos up on a now dead channel, where he will claim to see ghosts in the corner or chairs rocking from out of nowhere. This also happens to be the channel where he talked about his childhood. But he was also more than happy happy to discuss it with Linda. During his first interview with Linda, Jupiter would reveal something quite shocking. Whether it's a misguided lie intended to impress Linda or the truth, I'll let you be the judge. Know what she did after I fucked her? What? Pressed rape charges on me. After that, she went to the police and said, I raped her due to my little sister telling her to do it. Yeah, she's a little bitch, but I still love her. She's my little sister after all. It may have been hard to catch in there, so let me do a little bit of explaining. Jupiter claims that he got these charges because his little sister convinced the girl to report him. In a much later interview, Jupiter would not deny these allegations. He would just excuse it with the fact that he was just a child, claiming he did not know any better. Yet he still wholeheartedly blames his sister for reporting him. Jupiter's sister has been interviewed before, and she revealed a number of horrible things that Corbin had done to her during their childhood, many including physical violence. And to be honest, my sisters and I studied ninjutsu growing up. Me and my sibs, we all studied ninjutsu. How come every time... I ask you about like, like my desires. You bring up your sisters. Oh no, no, it's it's sorry. I have that bad habit of not like my. Jupiter is not the only one in the family guilty of these kinds of crimes, as he has had two brothers arrested for similar reasons. Shane was arrested for Jimmy Savile type crimes, and Duke was arrested for CP. Every single time without fail, when Jupiter is asked about these occurrences, he never denies them, using excuse after excuse to try to justify not only his actions, but his family's. And Jupiter has used a lot of excuses 
because he's been caught many times trying to solicit minors on TikTok, Discord, Facebook. There are very few social media platforms that he hasn't used to try and do this. None of these things he denies, only tries to excuse, and it seems like as more time passes, the excuses get more outlandish. One of my favorite being that he did all of these things simply because he was high off nicotine and couldn't think straight. I was set up. I was really set up. I was set up. I was tired. I was high on nicotine and I wasn't thinking straight. So, um, do you, are, have you stopped talking to pe to minors on TikTok? Yes, I have. I stopped. I quit doing that. There were some who contacted me on, uh, on discord, but I, but I kind of blocked them and left their chats because I didn't want to be kept being set up. So I said it would be better if we all stayed friends until they're older, but until then we're just going to remain friends, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that's what I was going to, that's what I should have said the first time, but instead I was high and exhausted at the time. So I wasn't thinking clearly. Jupiter claims that because of sleep deprivation, problems at home, and nicotine abuse that he tried to commit one of the most heinous crimes known to man. He believes that as long as you own up to something and apologize for it, that you're instantly forgiven, no matter how heinous the crime. This is why he never denies committing all of these acts, because he thinks by saying that he was changed or was in a different state of mind, that he is completely excused from all blame. If that was the case, there would be no drunk drivers in prison, Corbin, and cigarette-related crime would be up a thousand percent. Corbin truly lives in a different reality, one where vampires, werewolves, wolves, homunculi, and getting high off nicotine exist. So he very rarely thinks about the real world consequences of his actions. An ample amount of evidence had been submitted to the local police department, enough to issue a search warrant. Jupiter claims that one day while he was hanging out at home, the cops came busting in. He offered no resistance, even though he is a master of drunken assassination fist. More on that later. The police ended up seizing three of Jupiter's devices, his phone, his laptop, and his Xbox. All of these items are still currently in possession of the police, and the depth of the charges against him is currently unknown. That picture of me got circulated all over the internet. So, yeah, I couldn't do anything about it. Did you send that to someone that was like underage? When I was younger, when that was the older me, that's the old me that did that. But this it was someone new. underage, right? That you sent it to, and that, that's why they're mad at you? That's why the police were called, yes. I stopped talking to them, of course. I I cut contact, you know. I cut contact with those people because I knew that it was too risky to talk to them anymore. Especially if I was just going to be their friend, it would be too risky. All of this isn't just contained to the internet either. Jupiter has met up with a minor in person more than once. One girl in particular recounted her story of being groomed by Jupiter for years. During one of the Linda Binda interviews, this would be mentioned, and as usual, Jupiter never denied it. You know, I found out a lot from Abby about how when she was 13, you were 17. When she was 14, you were 18. When you were 15, she, you, when she was 15, you were 19. You're, there's a four, four year age difference. And I know that's, that's her choice to walk away if she wants to. I know, but that's not, that's not the point. You were in a relationship w with someone when you were 20 years old and she was 16. I know. After everything that I realized happened, before I realized it, things had gotten already out of hand. Like, before I realized it, everything I had was gone. All the people I had who loved me were gone. People I cared about, gone.
Throughout all these interviews, Jupiter incriminates himself, all in an attempt to try and date Linda. These interviews were conducted over the course of months. At the time of recording this video, there were nine known interviews with Linda and Corbin. Sometimes Jupiter would get mad and you wouldn't hear from him for months. Then he would pop up and, of course, have new allegations against him. After months of inactivity, Jupiter began to appear in videos and on live streams once again. Linda was able to interview him again. He appeared over on Nick Nobody's channel where Cal Wrangler and Nick interviewed him live, and even me and Smokey got an opportunity to interview him one night. The interview went on for about four and a half hours. We had various other content creators, as well as the chat, ask Jupiter questions, and some of the things that he said were absolutely damning. Things get pretty wild towards the end, but in the beginning we were asking him some pretty easy questions like why the police arrived at his house just trying to see if his story had changed at all because those people were starting to basically accuse me of shit and i told them to back the hell up or back and back the hell down otherwise what did I'm they going accuse to you of what, what did they accuse you of like being like, a what? pedophile and all that bullshit you know it was oh, just man. a bunch of shit i now, was why like I, why would they do that i mean technically speaking i was drunk i wasn't sleeping well i was kind of in a bad spot and i did some questionable things and talked to some questionable people and wound up be considered being considered a pedophile. the truth is i was in a bad spot in my life i was living at an apartment a townhouse my mind you and one night I was drunk and bored and had nothing to do. So I figured I'd go and talk to some people, make new friends, you know, try to be friendly. Well, in my drunken haze, I kind of talked to some minors and sent only one photo. Of course, many of you have already seen that photo. I'm not going to I'm not going to be sh bringing it up or showing it. But that photo got circulated to certain underage people and people started raging and hating on me. Then about a week to two weeks later, the police showed up at my door. Well, technically showed up at my bedroom door and I was just waking up and I had just gotten off my TikTok live and I had just gotten up. The police open the door, yell out, Nampa PD, freeze. And I just, I froze. I put up my hands, knelt down on the floor, showed them I was not going to, you know, fight them. I wasn't going to fight. I wasn't going to do anything. And one cop comes up and they're like, I know that you hate that you don't want to be cuffed right now, but we're doing it for our own safety. And I was like, it's all right. And she goes, okay, I'm going to fleece you. Do you have anything that can stick? prick or stab me i was like nope about five minutes in they take me down into the living room and sit me on the couch and they start grilling me for information and i just skirted around the issue trying to get them to stop you know because i was uncomfortable at the time i was really uncomfortable just getting grilled like that having cops up in my face you know i was really uncomfortable i was scared i didn't know what else to do so I skirted around the issue, and they took my Xbox One, my phone, and my laptop and left. And so far as I know, they're still investigating this. These claims of me circulating child pornography on so, the internet when I really wasn't. So you had three devices confiscated by the police? Yes. Another reoccurring theme throughout the interview is Corbin excusing everything with either not sleeping right or having a nicotine addiction. At the start of this interview, before we even brought Jupiter in, Smokey told me that he had prepared a special little video that he wanted to watch with Jupiter. This video would contain some of the most damning evidence against him, where he openly talks about wanting to receive photos from someone under the age of 18. Though Jupiter acts like he is disgusted by his actions in this video, it will be proven later in the interview 
that he was currently up to even worse. Yeah. Twitter, can I still send you pictures of myself even if I'm underage? Because I'm only 13. It's up to you, sweetie, if you want to. Because I don't mind. If you do, I don't mind. I feel like people might have missed that. Let me go back a little bit. Oh, no one oh my God. Look for a body. Twitter, can I still send you pictures of myself even if I'm underage? Because I'm only 13. Can't be someone with screen recording. Because I don't mind. If you do, I don't mind. I did the pill through face my face. eyes. No, so I, I wasn't would never. Looking, yeah. Well, hold up, Jupiter. If you look at my like, eyes, what? if you look at my got... eyes, you can tell that I'm drunk. You could tell by the okay. The oh. eyes are dilated. If you look I... into those eyes in the picture there, you can see that my eyes are dilated from drinking and heavily not I and not sleeping. Today. I was just pointing out that I was drunk at the time. I wasn't thinking clearly. My brain okay. was on the wall at the time. All right, Brian Rizzo understands. Believe me. Yeah, you can. But are, can I still send you pictures of myself even if I'm underage? Because I'm only thirteen. It's up to you, I mean... if you want to. Because I don't mind. If you do, I don't mind. Do you plan on turning me in if I say yes? <laughs> no, I would never. I lower the age consent all the way to sixteen if you guys wanted me to, or I even change it to fifteen. I'm not very big down there, but I can still. Okay, well, there. I feel like I that could, clip played. I can yeah. say that. Let's just leave that and just leave that video now. I think, yes, at the time I was heavily drinking. I was drinking heavily, was not sleeping right because my brain wasn't letting me sleep. And plus I had a really loud roommate downstairs who was constantly yelling at his video games late into the evening and I could not sleep. Yeah, that As you could it. tell by my eyes, there were dark circles under my eyes. I was not sleeping. My brain was going But haywire. that is you. But that is you. Yes, but it is me, but I wasn't sleeping, nor was I in the right state of mind. I do admit right. I made a mistake by saying all that shit, but it's basically because I was not sleeping well and I was halfway, I was halfway drunk, you know, I was halfway in the halfway mark of drinking. Well, I think a really important thing is, Jupiter, I've heard you say before, too, that you were high on nicotine when you were doing stuff. Yes, uh, at the time... I had three or four different nicotine juices at the time, and I was high as fuck, so. Yeah. So, of course, Jupiter didn't expect us to play that clip. I'm not even sure if he knew that that was made public. I'm sure that he has many Discord calls and other conversations that are damning, but are just lost to time. But Jupiter's shock to that video pales in comparison to the next one. Before we started the live stream, Smokey also revealed to me that on Jupiter's Facebook account, it showed that he was in a relationship with a minor born in 2008. Jupiter's profile even indicated that they had gotten married the day before this interview was conducted. So when we showed him the screenshots that were in Smokey's video, he was shocked to say the least. But as always, full of excuses. Who the fuck? Whoa, what is this? That's, that's my girl. Who? What? What is this? Objection. Hold up, hold up. I think that there's still more. Let's just. Who, who is this? This is, this this is your girlfriend? She's born. Yes. So this, this is your girlfriend. Yes, in the UK. In the UK, she actually... In the UK, 16 is actually considered adulthood. Did you not know that? Yeah, in the, well, in the UK, she's considered an adult. This is your current girlfriend, though, like as of right now? Yes, actually. No, we're just curious, man. We're just curious. How where, did you guys you guys, where did you guys find this video? Dude, I just found random. Yeah. yeah, we got sent this, and it was very threatening. Yeah, they told us, dude, if we didn't play it, like they were gonna like hurt us and stuff. So like we were kind of anonymous, you kids. I knew it was you guys. They're probably God. watching right now. Hey, anonymous, if you're watching, why don't you come on the chat and face me? The hacker oh my God. will take you on, Anonymous. They're here. They're here. The per Oh my God, they're here. Hey, Wrangler. At completely the perfect timing, Cal Wrangler and Nick Nobody arrive on the show to talk to Jupiter. Like I said before, they had already interviewed Jupiter a couple nights before we had. I highly recommend you guys go check that out. 
I'll have it linked in the description. So when Jupiter saw them, he already wasn't too happy, but because of the timing was truly convinced that they were a part of Anonymous. Your old habits die hard, don't they? This is, uh, I think your third 15 year old? She's 16, actually. Uh, and then the 16. UK. That's a one year difference. You said that you weren't going to date people that were like young anymore or minors. Doesn't matter if she's 16 in the UK. Guess what, Chuckle? You're in the US. She's 16. That's just getting able to drive. That's just being able to get from point A to point B. That's not even being able to hold a full time job yet legally. That is hey, a Cal child. That is a high schooler. Oh, no, buds. Why don't you shut the fuck up? How about, how about you face me like a goddamn man? Stop being such a dick and face me like a man. Come find me. I don't care what you think of me for one. It's and not just me that thinks that, just so you know. You just got exposed to th a thousand people that you're dating a 16-year-old. We're having technical difficulties, Shadow Raven. You have to defend us. You have to defend us. We're having technical difficulties. Our mics are cut. Yeah, no, she would be 15. She would not be 16. So she's not even an adult in the UK at this point. You're just lying. So this 15-year-old hit you up and you just decided... Because it says here... uh. That, that, you know, you've been in a relationship, they're, fifth, they're 15, 16, and you've been married since yesterday. She was the one who did so. She was the one who contacted me. So then it's your job as an adult to block her or close the conversation. But you're currently married to a 16-year-old. Not even. She's 15, Kiwi. And after a while, we start talking about Jupiter's brothers. As I've said numerous times, two of them have been to jail, but to Jupiter, this is no big deal. So whenever someone starts talking about them in a negative light, he adamantly defends them. But strangely enough, during our interview, when we first started discussing his brothers, he seemed very reserved, and his body language changed a lot, refusing to even speak about what Shane had done to land him in prison. Well, Jupiter, what's your brother in jail for? He got framed for something he didn't do. Well, what well, did he get is framed it? for? What did he get framed for? I'd rather not talk about it. He was sent an inappropriate picture of a young person by that person's parent. Yeah, yeah, trouble. So, so CP? By a parent, yes. And you but have the three devices seized currently. Yes, but the Xbox has nothing on it, nothing of interest. Do the other two? I mean, only one brother, only two brothers have been in prison. One currently still, one out and living a good life. And one going to go in. What was the other one in there for, Jupiter? Exactly what I told you about. He got framed for circulating. But, but, but you said there were two brothers in jail. Was the other one in there for the same stuff? Let's just say he won, okay? He won? He f***ed won. I'm not going to say the full word. I've been... He effed one? What did he mean he effed one? He effed one what? Usually, Jupiter would defend his brothers tooth and nail, but this time was different. He was very reserved, having extremely little to say. So we decided to move on to other topics. We were extremely interested in why Jupiter had had three devices seized by the police. The laptop and the phone make sense due to his Discord escapades, but they also took his Xbox One. Curious as to why, we asked Corbin what he would do on his Xbox. Corbin said that after having his last Xbox seized, that a staff member gave him his old one, and that he would use this Xbox to play with his group of friends, who were all in high school. So, online on Xbox Live, I play with these boys, and their names are Dodo, Prided, Bam, and a bunch of other guys that I play with. They are all friends that I've made online. They're all friends of mine that we play Sea of Thieves together and whatnot. That's what we do. Because we're friends. We're friends online. We hang out. Sure, they might be a little young, but we're still friends online because we play games together. That's you know all we do. We... You know how old they are? Huh? That's all we do is play Sea of Thieves and whatnot to fuck around with each other. Just hang out and fuck around. Yeah, but how old are they, though? I mean, sure, Bam and Prided and Dodo may be like, what, still in high school or something, but we're still friends online and we still play Sea of Thieves together. 
we're a crew. We're buddies. We play online together. We play Sea of Thieves because it's fun. We're just having fun on Sea of Thieves, just playing that game, sailing around, fucking around, finding out, finding treasure, just fucking around. Boys will be boys, you know? Us guys will be guys, you know? Jeez. Yeah. Jupiter's usual excuses were flying. I was high on nicotine, not sleeping well, but he never denied anything, just saying it was all in the past. And during one of the many times that Jupiter was explaining this to us throughout the interview, things got a little weird. Yeah, I'm gonna nip this in the bud and finally just go free and You're live fine. my life and be happy and be a good boy. Not a bad boy. I hate being bad boy. I want to be good boy. I just want to be a good boy. All right. I want to be considered a good boy by my family. I want to be praised instead of looked down upon. A good precious boy. That's all he wants. I just want to live and be a good boy. This is this podcast has been a roller coaster of emotions. There were a couple of moments during this interview that I was truly speechless. I of course knew that Jupiter had done a good majority of these things, but then he would hit me with stuff like that that I just wasn't expecting. And the moment that made me feel that the most is when he blatantly said that he was guilty of everything. I know that he's already done it numerous times, but this one is pretty black and white. Next yeah. question, please. <laughs> Why are they calling you greasy though, bro? Don't know, don't care. Why are they calling you a chomo, though? Yeah. Probably because of all the fucking shit I've done. Dude. I'm sorry for what I've done, okay? I, I really fucked up. I really stepped in it. And I just... I never meant for it to happen. Yes, I fucked up. Yes, I was... I was wrongfully hurting kids that I shouldn't have. Yes, I was a pedophile, and I've changed that now, and I'm changed. And I want all the families I ruined to know that I'm changed now, and I will, I will come, I will come to, I will come and literally apologize to all of you face to face if I have to. I will apologize, and I am apologizing publicly for my actions. I have no ill will against anyone who hates me still. I have no ill will. But yes, I am a pedophile. Yeah. But that changes today. And that changes in every way today. Even now, I really don't know what to say. Except that Jupiter really thinks that saying that he has changed will immediately absolve him of all of his crimes. After hearing all of this, and of course, getting Jupiter to admit to just about everything, we began to criticize him on a number of things that he had done, including the crimes that we had previously discussed. Jupiter assumed that this interview was to clear his name after the Nick Nobody and Cow Wrangler interview, that went so poorly for him, unknowingly stepping into an extremely similar situation. So when he finally put it together that we were not there to clear his name, his mood totally changed. It was a joke. It was, it was a, joke. a joke. I didn't know she was 15 because she lied to me, so I didn't uh, know. I no, you're, li you're lying to us. Clear. You know what? If I die, I die. What, what about why are you talking about Jesus. that? Jesus, Jesus, oh, after you mentioned the death penalty, my soul already left my body. You're talking to a husk now. We're talking to a husk. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, well, right now, you're talking to his husk. I'm a harmless person. I have, I have screenshots. You know, I actually, I, I have my doubt suffering alongside those families everything to look for even if i'm underage because i'm only 13. I, you're all crossing a line go ahead and report me if you're gonna because i don't give a shit anymore Reporter, people have already reported you to the police absolutely all of this has already gone to the cops i wouldn't worry hell the police could be breaking my door in a minute why are you so worried about the police kicking down your door at any minute if you've done nothing wrong because i don't want my family to bury another well, they're not going to bury you. They'll be able to see you behind bars. <laughs> yep. You can live a long, fulfilling life in prison, You might Corbin. even see Duke. 
No. The truth is, if I go to prison, that's it. There's no coming out of there. A lot. Yeah, I don't know, man. Remember? I think you'd do well. One thing that I previously forgot to mention was the death penalty. In Iowa, they passed a law where people who committed crimes similar to Corbin's could face the death penalty. By the end of the interview, this had Corbin so concerned that he was actively watching his door for the police to come break it down, making very grim statements like, I don't want my family to lose another. But the sadness did not last, because after thoroughly discussing what he had done and why it was illegal, he had realized that this interview was not to clear his name. And that's when we started to receive the threats. Of course, we got all of the iconic ones like, you'll end up in a hole in my hometown. But there was one threat in particular that stuck with me. It didn't come from Jupiter. It came from the devil himself possessing Jupiter's body, or at least, that's what Jupiter claims. Shadow Raven and Jupiter. Hell, I even went by another name. Mephisto. I am the Werepire Demon Dragon and his body. And let's just say... I am. And I will anyone. Oh, yeah, bud. Meaning you guys are screwed. You see, Corbin let go of his body. He's no longer in control. He's no longer in control of this body. He let me take control. You guys are fucked. Never sleep again. For Lucifer is out for your blood. I may not be in physical form with you guys, but let's just say I'll be the demon at night that waits for you to go to bed before it's your throat. You've angered my disciple, and now you're going to pay for it. I will only leave this body after my contract with him is up. This demon will be waiting for you to sleep before it kills you sleep safe at night again. Don't even try to sleep. All right, Lucifer, that's enough. Shortly after the devil made the appearance, Corbin would leave the show. Throughout the four and a half hours that we interviewed Corbin, there were countless jaw-dropping moments. If you want to see the whole thing, I have it up on my Kiwi Tapes Rumble page, but Smokey MCC also made a great video condensing the whole thing down. Our interview with Jupiter is something that will probably always stick with me. Just the sheer openness that he shared about all the things that he's done was shocking, and proved to me that he is unsympathetic towards the people he has harmed. It always leads back to how he's been impacted. Jupiter hasn't been seen again after this interview. The Facebook we found that had details pertaining to the current minor he was dating is now gone, and it seems like for now, so is Jupiter. I have no idea what's going to come of all of this. Before Jupiter had made all of these admissions, he had already had three devices seized by his local police department, where they have set for months. Boatloads of evidence has been turned over, and nothing has been done. And sadly, I don't know if anything ever will be done. Jupiter's crimes have been known about publicly for years now. He has continued to perpetuate them, and it seems like the only thing stopping him now is the eye of the public, which has made him afraid to commit these kinds of actions, as he knows he will be discovered eventually. Make no mistake, people. This is a man who has hurt people before, and is very capable of doing it again. He is very open about what he has done, and has claimed dozens of times to have changed and left this behavior in the past, only to be discovered actively doing these things a short time later. Almost like he can't help himself, and I highly doubt that he will ever stop. But for now, that's all I have on Jupiter the Hybrid, guys. While I'm almost certain that Jupiter will return, sometimes he will go missing for months, and hopefully next time we cover him, it will be with some good news. But for now, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially till the end. It always means the world to me, guys. A massive shout out to my channel members as well. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you all have a wonderful night, and be sure 
to keep it kiwi. But yes, I do practice martial arts in a way, but I, I, I practice in martial arts drunken onsat suken, drunken assassinations fist. Just show us just a little something, man. I want to see a little something. You're a master. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. So my fighting stance is like this. I take my hands. My fighting stance is like this. Hit them like this, grab their arm, grapple around, flip them onto the ground on their back, hold them like this, put one knee on their back and, the, and my hand around the back of their neck and just keep them there. And this is how a predator fights? And I call it, and I called it my, my quick dodge skip. I called it the quick strike throwdown maneuver because I was able to put my knee right on their back my hand on the back of their neck, and their arm up in the air, basically incapacitating them. Now, have you ever tried this in real life? One time in Cub Scouts, I actually used it. I used that technique. Did it work? His kid throwing hands with me, so I decided enough was enough. So I grabbed. So he got up and started, you know, swinging at me. He got up against. He got me up against the wall and started hitting me from behind. So I quickly grabbed him, flipped him around, threw him onto the ground on his back and held him there with one knee on his back, my hand on the back of his neck, and his arm up in the air. 